we've got big Zach Khan here today, pro bodybuilder, um, to do a seminar and a talk at Jay's Gym in Horwich. Um, it's an honour and a pleasure to have Zach here. A lot of us are fans of him. Um, I became a fan myself of watching the Road to Recovery vlogs like you did after you injured your knees. And that's when I got an insight into you as a person and, and the mentality that you have and, and what it took to overcome the injuries that you had, which would have ended most people. Uh, and I became a fan from there really and followed your career. Um, I remember seeing in the beef, the UK beef magazine off as muscle mag back then because I was competing in them days and seeing you trying to turn pro and you know, you're coming top two in Britain and things and so sort of followed your career um, from the early days, right from the beginning really. Um, and it's an honour to have you here and uh, we'd like to hear you talk about sort of your, uh, your amateur days through to your pro days and then Perhaps I'll open up to some questions after you've uh, done that. Yeah, no problem, Jeff. Thank you for having me here. Which of these, how I got into bodybuilding was basically, as you know, you know, when you're a kid, you know, you see action heroes, you know what I mean? You don't see as many, many big guys now on your TV screen. When I was growing up, we had the A team, you had BA Brackers, you had Sylvester Stallone in the Rocky movies, you know? And there were, most of the action heroes were muscle bound. You had Van Damme. You know, you, you know, as a young kid seeing these guys there, you thought they were massive, you know what I mean? Because you're a young kid, they all look like giants to you. And you know, then I came across, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and I was like, what the fuck is that? You know what I mean? <laughs> and then, you know, you, you, more of the movies you see, you need to research about it. And it's just something that triggers something in your brain and you think to yourself, wow, I, I want to be like that. I want to be like these action heroes. You watch cartoons like He-Man. You know what I mean? Muscle bound guys and stuff like that. And uh, it was just basically one of them things like, you know, growing up and, you know, uh, having He Man comic books and stuff like that. I think my dad must have got worried. He must have thought I was bloody gay or something at the time. All these muscly guys, pictures in my bedroom, thinking, what's going on here? You know? So it was like one of them things. And, you know, started off, you know, watching Rocky movies and I started getting into boxing. So I thought to myself, oh yeah, you gotta do boxing training to get muscles like Rocky and you know, drink raw eggs. <laughs> yeah, I quickly spat that out, you know what I mean? Yeah, I thought, my God, I can't be drinking that crap, you know? So yeah, it was just things like that. I was just growing up, it was around action movies because my brother and my dad, was, my dad used to love to watch wrestling. You know, at that time you had Hulk Hogan, you had Ultimate Warrior. You know, just larger than life characters. So, yeah. you know, a kid growing up in the 80s, it was a perfect time, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Perfect time to be, you know, what's it now, towards uh, that lifestyle of, you know, whether it was martial arts, because Kung Fu movies were big at that time, you know what I mean? You had Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee movies, they were just crazy. And there was so much sports going on. I remember like one week I used to go boxing, I used to get bored of it a couple of months later, then go karate, get bored of that a couple of months later, go kung fu, go Thai boxing. There were so many different sports to do, you know? I remember like I, I did a tour in America and everything, come back home and uh, started training uh, again. And fuck me, uh, that's when the accident happened, you know what I mean? In the gym, I was just a normal leg session. People always ask me saying, oh, uh, did you do something where you shouldn't have? Did you go heavier than normal? Stuff like that. And the thing is, no, it was just a normal training session. And uh, just one of them things. I, I, you did you have any knees or any knee pain or anything before? Man? No, nothing, nothing. Like I said, that's the crazy thing about it. It's like, you know, when you push your body that much, uh, that heavy, you know, you're gonna get something one one day, aren't you? You know what yeah. I mean? It's just one of them things. It's like if you're gonna be driving a hundred miles per hour every time, there's gonna chance it's gonna leave it out of crash. Too much. Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing, you know what I mean? So that happened, and I, I thought, fuck it now. This is a, I just got my pro card. It's fucking it's end of my fucking career. Everything, you know what I mean? And. Uh, I had, I had a good time to think while I was in the hospital and, you know, and the doctors were such arseholes, you know, the doctor, the surgeon, you know what I mean? And he says to me, oh, how do you do that? Well, squatting was over, you shouldn't be doing that. Then I go, 
Like, what should I be doing then? Like, please advise me, like, I go, like, should I just be, should I just be sat around with a big beer belly like yours? Like, what then? You know what I mean? It's like, like looking down on me, you know what I mean? For doing something, I'm pursuing something, and I'm taking my body to some extremes, and like, doctors will, will, no sense you pack in training and be depressed for the rest of your life. That's the answer to everything. You know what I mean? They don't understand an athlete's mindset, you know? And it really pissed me off and it kept on eating away at me, say, and I just thought to myself, you know, he says to me, oh, you're not going to be able to do this type of training again and everything like that. And I just thought once to myself, fuck you, I'm going to show you. You know what I mean? And from that point, I made a purpose of, of it to do the proper rehab, get back to the gym and start fucking training again. You know what I mean? And I did do it for six months only to find out they didn't fucking do my operation properly. So the tendon was attached, meant to be 100%, it was only really 25% attached. So that's why I couldn't straighten my legs properly. Like it, was, like it was like that, I couldn't bring them up fully. I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with it? You know what I mean? And the other one was the same. So I had to privately do an MRI scan and it showed her. So I showed him the fucking list and I said to him, look at it, sort it out. So that I had to get the operation done again six months later. And then when that was recovered, then I had to get the other leg done again as well. So I had like two operations on each leg at that time. And then six months later after that, I had to have a keyhole surgery to get them cleaned out because all the crap that left in there from the operation. Because it was all that bristle and stuff behind the kneecap. Mm -hmm. So it's like, after, uh, technically I had three operations on each leg. Yeah, when one, when one comes on the yeah. yeah. So you know, and that's why I always tell people like, listen, you know, I could have easily given up on myself and I could have easily gone into depression and could have gone into a black hole and I could have been sucky. You would have never heard of me now. I would have disappeared from me. People would have said, oh, where's that? I remember that boy, who was that come on? Oh, he had such, such a good prospect, you know, being at the Olympia State and stuff like that. And um, I could have done that to myself. But you know what? I owed it to myself that I'm not going to let this defeat me. I'm not going to let these doctors defeat me, you know what I mean? Because uh, two ways my life would have ended up, you know what I mean? Like, you know, would have been in depression, would have probably, I probably would have been probably dead by now, you know what I mean? To the point where I wouldn't want to train, I wouldn't want to do nothing, would have been so, you know, self, you know, insecure on myself, you know what I mean? And that's why I thought to myself, like, worst comes to worst, eh? at least I want to look healthy. At least I want to be able to get back in the gym and do what I love doing, you know what I mean? And this all comes down to mindset. You know, you have to say to yourself and focus. Don't get me wrong, people around me give up. My so-called friends, nowhere to be heard or seen. Because they thought, it's finished, it's over. He's no use to us anymore, you know what I'm saying? You have friends like that. But then suddenly, you know, to see me coming back and do the road to recovery, and that was good motivation for me and people, you know what I mean? Maybe my destiny was to give other people hope. You know, when I get emails uh, written to me, get people messaging me all the time and saying, is that how you do it? How do you get through it? You know what I mean? And you know, step one is, you have to be around the right people. If you're around negative people, you can be as positive as you want, but then negativity is gonna wear you down. And these are the people who are like leeches, they love to suck you dry, you know what I mean? And that's the problem. You always have to sit back and listen to what other people say. You know, it matters about this whole, whether you're doing it for competing, or doing it for health, or doing it to get a better body, whatever reason it is, eh, you have to be motivated to do it for yourself, not for social media, not thinking to yourself, oh, like, you've got to ask yourself, if social media wasn't around today, would you still be training the gym? as hard as you are. I would. A lot of people only do it for social media. Fucking post these uh, stupid videos there. Eh? Like, you know, there's no motivation gone into it. No intensity gone into that workout. You know what I mean? It's like, who are you, who are you motivating? Who are you 
You know what I mean? Because by watching half of the 99.9% of the videos on Instagram bore the shit out of me. You know what I mean? It's like, if you're gonna fucking record a fucking set, I wanna see you record it to fucking failure. I wanna see some fucking aggression in it. I wanna see that you can't get one more fucking rep out. I just don't want you going. Oh yeah, all right. Yeah. Yes, guys, that was a great workout on the block. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, fuck's sake, man. Yeah, and that's what we got nowadays. We got influencers. And influencers have like, changed this, uh, they've changed, changed the industry. And you know, and I just, you know, people said to me, oh, what do you think about men's physique, bikini, and stuff like this nowadays? I said, listen, if this is getting more people involved into the sport, great. You know what I mean? I haven't got a problem, you know what I mean? Whatever sport you're thinking of doing, you know? But the thing about, the thing about it is, eh, don't sexualize the sport. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The problem is the sport is sexualized now, where women, you know, have never competed with the big titties and ass are getting sponsorships more than a woman who's a British champion. Yeah. But these sponsors, these supplement companies are to blame because if you didn't sponsor these women, you know, they won't be doing this. Sponsor the true athletes, mm -hmm. the way you want your company to go, the way you want it to excel, but the problem is sex sells. And that's the problem we've got nowadays, you know what I mean? And it's, it's, all, of, it's all about that, and that's the problem you've got social media guys with six packs, you know what I mean, who do my, my only fans and shit like that and you know they promote promoting our sport you know and uh, so like you know that's why like you know bodybuilding is like the porn industry everybody's fucking everybody you know what I mean and uh, that's the, the sad truth about it so you know some, some young people are following a certain person or a certain girl and they're thinking she's a real athlete but she's not she's just sexualizing herself you know what I mean and these young girls are looking up to these girls. And the real athletes, they're not. Because they're not the ones who are getting the likes because they're not showing titties and ass. You know what I mean? With a tub of protein between the tits or something. You know what I mean? But that's the way it is, you know what I mean? Like, you can't hate the people for doing it. I don't hate the people for doing it. It's the companies who are sponsoring them. It doesn't mean, you know, you've got to, you've got to train to compete. You've got to train to better yourself. You've got to train to, you know, you've got to ask yourself there when you get up in the morning and you look at yourself in the mirror, naked, and you say to yourself, am I happy with what I'm looking at? Would a woman be turned on looking at me? That's your fucking motivation. I wake up every morning with a boner on, I'm saying, yeah, I'm ready to fuck this bitch up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fuck sake. That's like you gotta, even though you don't compete, I compete with myself. You know? End of the day, it's like it's like this, eh? Like when you look when you look after yourself as an older guy, you know, it's better, you know, you somebody looks older, they look well. How many younger girls fucking fancy older guys? You know what I'm saying? It's just the it's just a bonus. Your body is your temple, you know what I mean? And you've you got to look after yourself. And, if, and if, if you're complaining about saying, oh, I'm not getting attention, I feel like fucking shit, and stuff like that, what is a woman thinking about when she looks at you? She doesn't say, she looks like a bag of shit. Why do I want to sleep with that for? You know what I mean? It's true though, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's like the way we see a nice looking girl, I think, fucking hot. She looks hot. But when you see a fucking, a Greg's pine munch eating bitch, What's the fuck are you gonna say about that? I'm gonna say, look, keep the clothes on. <laughs> you know what I mean though? It's like, let's be honest. You're telling me, eh, a girl, if you met a girl and eh, you sent her just a picture of yourself in your head, eh, and you ended up meeting her, eh, on Facebook or Instagram, and she saw you and you're fucking out of shit fighting, sir. That ain't fucking you. Who the fuck's that? Either, either you fuck off, or you buy me drinks until you look like that. You know what I mean? It's like, a woman will not be ashamed to fucking tell you that. 
So why the fuck should you uh, be ashamed to tell a woman when she catfishes you? True, isn't it? Yeah. How many girls do you know, they'll take a picture of themselves with the fucking tits squeezed there and they fucking <laughs> take a picture of themselves and then you see the rest of the body and say, listen look, big tits and a fat woman don't count. Same way, abs on a skinny guy don't count. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like that. It's like you have to find your motivation. I've got guys who come to the gym. They're motivated to go out on a Saturday night looking good. If that's your motivation, that's what's going to get you to train hard, do it. Nothing wrong with it. If your motivation is there, I want to look good for my kids, I want to be healthy for my kids, I want my kids to have a strong role model, I want, I want my kids to look at me and say, my dad's like fucking he man, then that's your fucking motivation. And you know, if your motivation is to compete, if your motivation is to do what's in a, a certain sport and compete one, that's your motivation. Don't let nobody deter you from that. You know? You all have to find out your motivation. It's like, what's your motivation? What you said then about your kids and your yeah. Be, Be healthy for your kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be a healthy role model for your kid. Yeah. And a kid, you know, having a healthy dad is the best role model they can have. Because you're showing them good responsibility. Like a kid will go to school and say, my dad's Superman. You know what I mean? And shit like that, you know? The same way, what's your, what's your motivation? To stay strong and healthy as I get older. Yeah, yeah as, exactly, isn't it? You know what I mean? And your motivation. This one on the ground, physique. Yeah. Uh, just look in the mirror and be like, yeah. Yeah, I'm this. happy with myself. You? I'm trying to keep everything together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm 74, not sure. Wow, well, awesome, well done, well done, well done, well done. Well done. Well done. No, but, three times a week. Yeah. No, but the thing is, you're doing it to, you know, prolong your lifespan, be <coughs> healthy as possible. Most 74 year old people can't walk, never mind fucking train. Do you understand? Yeah. Most 74 year old people, eh, basically, are sat in their old people's home. But like you, as I've got in here, I've changed where I've been. Yeah, like, what, what, what people have got to realise is that I, an injury doesn't mean it's end of the fucking world. An injury just means you've got to reassess yourself. What you can do. When, when somebody gets his, uh, when somebody has an accident and they get their leg amputated, eh, does that mean they will wheel the wheelchair bound for the rest of their life? No. You see fucking amputees fucking running in the Paralympics. See, you see amputees with no arm training in the fucking gym. So j just because you get a little nigga or oh, got knee pain or oh, got elbow pain, oh, I'm not going to the gym. Fucking shut the fuck up and stop crying. You know, stop feeling sorry for yourselves. Because feeling sorry for yourself, 99% of people on social media don't give a fuck and the 1% one, one percent but do care, they don't give a fuck either. Because it's on yourself. You know, we, we're not here there to, what's it, in this, uh, in this world, and somebody to give us a pat on back and give us a, give us a participating award. We're here there to do what we fucking gotta do as men. You know, listen, what, we, what we're doing in this time, eh, we're, we're pussies compared to the people who went to war for this country. Went to war for any country. 16, 17 year old, these kids on the front line with fucking guns. And now you've got kids there, eh? fucking safe spaces. You know what I mean? So, you know, so you've got to fucking understand, you know, it's like, what are your fucking motivations? That's what should get you out of bed. What's your motivation? That should stop you from doing the bad habits what you fucking do. You know? And you can't keep making the same excuse up and say, oh, next week, next week, I'll start next week. There is no fucking next week. You're not fucking guaranteed to live until we're 74 like yourself, you know what I mean? We don't know what the fuck's around the corner for us to today, tomorrow. You know, life is not guaranteed that we're all gonna be a, we'll live to healthy to the old age. That's why you gotta make the fucking, 
you got to write down what you want. I know a lot, a lot of people think, oh yeah, write it down. Like, I've got a mirror at home, man, and I've got four sticks on there. I stick them up every time there. You know, I fucking, I, 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 I always put these motivational quotes on my window, mirror every morning. So when I'm brushing my fucking teeth, I have a look and it reminds me what I got to fucking do today. If I get out of the bed, eh, and I haven't gone for my morning walk, eh, I feel like a failure. If I if I've gone to the gym eh, and I missed the workout, eh, I feel like a fucking failure. So even though I don't feel like going to the gym some days, days and days I go and turn up and I just fuck around for a bit, warm up, talk to a couple of guys, and you know, and as soon as I know it, boom, I'm ready to fucking train now, and I start fucking training hard then. You know what I'm saying? But you see, if you've got time to sit at home and fucking watch Netflix, you've got fucking time to train for an hour. I'm sorry. There's people who say to me, Oh, it's okay for you. It wasn't like, you're sponsored in this one. I'm like, yeah. But I'm doing other fucking things as well. I just don't get up, eh? And go to the fucking gym and that's my fucking life. Do you know what I'm saying? That's the thing. Uh, you have to work around your life. This, it's like this, eh? I always tell people. You go to work, how many of you got a 9 to 5 job? You? You got a 9 to 5 job. So every day you fucking wake up for that 9 to 5 job to work for somebody else. And then you come home and suck your ass in and you don't work on yourself. How does that work? You work for somebody else, but then you don't work for yourself. Whether it is gaining more knowledge, doing an online university course, trying to get more uh, experience in another job, going to the gym, going Thai boxing, going boxing, anything. You're doing something for somebody else, but you're not doing something for your fucking self to bet yourself. And then you go turn up to work and you're like, you're in this dead end job and you're thinking, I fucking want to do something better. Then get out of the fucking comfort zone because you're comfortable. That's the problem. When you're comfortable, you're going to be doing that same shit fucking for the rest of your life. If you want more from your life, then you've got to get uncomfortable. And you've got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Listen, you know, everything is a fucking, uh, a fault when it first starts. Like it was a fault for me first then when I was first training there, thinking, oh, it was it. I never thought about my first show, but I thought, after a bit when I competed, I thought, oh, you can be a British champion. And it was just a thought, I thought, I won't mind being a British champion. You know what I mean? It's that initial thought what unites it. Same way, it's like a thought saying, I won't mind being healthier. I won't mind gaining two stone of muscle. I wouldn't mind doing an amateur boxing fight. I wouldn't mind doing an amateur Thai boxing fight. I wouldn't mind running a marathon. That's the thought, what starts first. And that's got to be the igniting factor for you to get up and go for something. Like for you, you got a gym, you even said to yourself, oh, I won't mind upscaling one day. How are you gonna upscale? Like what you're doing today, bring somebody into your gym, talk to, talk about stuff, bring in people in the, from industries, you know, for your, for your gym uh, customers, to say, you know what, this guy looks after the, look, looks after us, gives back to the gym. It's not like some gym owners take, 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 machines are broken, cables are gone, they're not fixed for months. All they care about is your money and offer on out on weekend. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. True gym owners give back to the gym because you know it's an investment. And when you invest in yourself and you invest in your business, it comes back tenfold. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. And that's what you have to realize. You all got that motivation in you, but you need to know what your motivation is. You know what I'm saying now, yeah? So, so like, like, what do you come to the gym for? Just want to stay healthy, strong and healthy. Yeah, and what made you start? Oh, uh, giant coaches. So yeah. That, yeah, good. And, and you just want to carry on in it and yeah. do what you want to do. And you know, you get that buzz in the morning, you want to come to the gym. Oh yeah, I always, yeah. Yeah, you love it, yeah. It becomes a lifestyle, you get addicted to it. You know what I mean? 
But what about you? Yeah, this is what I mean, you know? When a 74-year-old man is sat there and he's looking like that, eh? You ask yourself, <coughs> fuck me. I've got a long way to go, you know? And and then that's the thing, it's like, you know, you want to have a good life, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. And, you're, and your brain's still working, more people your age. Yeah, I'm handling this machine. Sorry? <laughs> I'm handling this machine. Oh, is he handling money? Yeah. Oh, wow, awesome, you know what I mean? Great, yeah. you know? That's what the gym's about, you know, you get different people coming to your gym and you don't know what their backgrounds are and everybody's here to help each other out, you know? Like, I, I can offer somebody, you know, somebody comes to me for a diet plan. The first thing I say to the person when they come to me for a diet plan is, for one week, write down what you're eating. And you know how many people don't come back to me after one week? Me asking that one simple task. A diary log of your food for one week. You know how many people come back to me? Can you guess? Yeah, sorry? Out of 10 people, how many come back? One. Eh? One. Because everybody wants it easy. Why should I tell you what to eat when I don't even know what you're doing yourself? If I, I can't just give you a diet what I think is going to be right for you, you, you. Because I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what your job is. Have you got a manual job? Have you sat down in your arse all day? Are you unemployed? So just on those three bases, eh, I know one person is more active, so he'll probably need more food than the other person who sat on his arse. Favourite body parts to train. Sorry? Favourite body parts to train. If you've got a favourite body part to train, you're not fucking training hard enough. <laughs> I fucking hate every body part. Sorry, yeah. uh, I hate every fucking body part, honestly. So, Don't get me wrong, when I was young, I was like, I, I train arms and chest. But as you get older, and you're more advanced in body, you fucking hate them all. Yeah. Honestly. Like, I do because of that much painful and that much effort, you know, it takes. You shouldn't be enjoying any body part, you know what I mean? So it doesn't matter whether it's legs, back, arms, whatever. They're all a bastard, you know what I mean? You mentioned before about the mind being the strongest muscle. Is there anything that you do to, like, Work on that. I told you. I know the physical life training that helps me mentally. Yeah. But also like meditation or no, what like you do with spiritual yeah. texture. No, well, also I told you in the morning I have post it notes. Like, yeah, post it yeah. notes. What means yeah. something to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you, when you're there in the minute looking at it, it's course and thinking, yeah. Fucking keep keep positivity around here. Yeah. And also, oh, yeah. Also, what's good also is well is have a cold fucking shower in the morning. Yeah. That'll fucking wake you up. You know what I mean? And get your, your day started. Yeah. Yeah. But have a fucking cold shower. It's good for your health benefits. It's good yeah. for it's, yeah. it's good shit to do. Have a routine in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My morning routine is there. My morning ritual is. I always say to people, you've got five seconds to get out of bed and do what you set out to do. And within that five seconds, eh, when that alarm clock goes off, eh, you're either going to fucking do well today or you're going to fail today. And, and a lot of people end up failing. You know why? As soon as they fucking wake up, alarm clock goes off on the mobile phone, I mean, Oh, let's have a look on social media. Big titty bitches. Fucking hell. Like, oh, what's my mate doing? My mate went out last night. Next minute you know it. Looking at other people's fucking life while they're in fucking bed. Yeah? But, and you're already being distracted. Get up, forget about your phone for the first hour. Your phone doesn't matter. But when you get out, go for that walk, get some fresh air. Don't fucking sit on your bike at home and do your pedaling away at your cardio. Get out. If you if you, if it's raining, get yourself a fucking coat, you know, a raincoat or something, and get out. It's only rain. It's only rain. My God, you're gonna only get wet. And once you've done that and got that routine, go out somewhere to a park, breathe in. We're not supposed to be locked in all day and have four walls. There's a beautiful world out there. Nature's beautiful. If you've got a dog, you go to the parks and you'll see the world. And I've got a dog, you know what I mean? I never realised how many nice parks were around my area. Until, you know, when you've got kids, 
You take kids to the different parks and wow, it's a nice park here. I've been in my area, had this many different places to go. And that's what you need to do, get out. Get out with nature and clear your mind. Get away from social media for like the first hour because that's what's gonna, we're always like that, we're always on your phone all day, you know what I mean? It's all about that, you know? And that's the first distraction you got. And before you know it, you got up and you're really looking at other people's life and comparing yourself with other people. And you're thinking to yourself, my life is crap compared to that. But you want to see the snippet. You want to see the snippet of their life. One picture, five second video. Man, I've seen so many people here driving in Lambos and Ferraris and nice bars and stuff like that. And then I've met them and I've, been, and I've talked to them and the guy's broke. Fucking broke. It's all for the gram. You know what I mean? Keep your cards close to your chest. Don't tell too many people what you want to do in life. Because there are a lot of people are jealous. They don't want you to do that. You know what I'm saying? If somebody says to you, eh, you've changed, say thank you. We're not meant to stay the same. We're not meant to be a pushover now. You come to me all the time asking me for help and I'm going to help you now. No. If you're not evolving as a human, evolving as a parent, evolving as a person, you know, what is the point of life? You know what I mean? You have to be evolving. You can't stay static. If you do, you're going to go end up going backwards. And then you're going to be looking at other people on social media saying, Oh, he's me, made him. We started off college together, look where he is now. Fuck comparing to others. Do the best you can do. Listen, there can be a millionaire and there can be a tramp in the streets. The millionaire can own X amount of millions in debt. And that tramp on the street owns no debt. So who's actually richer? It's all perspective, isn't it? So just because somebody lives in a one bedroom house, and he owns that, and another person lives in a mansion and he rents it, and he's rented. Who's better off? See what I'm saying? Don't look at the cars. You got a car, a normal a car will take you from A to B. You know what I mean? That's what they're there for. But somebody's got a Ferrari and, and some finance, and you've got a car and you own outright. See what I mean? This is the problem, people. Too much dwell in this social media bullshit. It's sad, really. You know what I mean? Because it's it's all about competition with each other, and people start feeling shit about themselves about it. And you need to stop that. You know what I mean? Compare. We all we all, we've all done it. We've all done it, and it happens. But use that energy for yourself. You know what I mean? Don't waste energy on other people, and, and you know, say. Fuck me, I wish that was me. I wish that was me, you know what I mean? Nah. Fucking better yourself. Work on yourself. That's the only way. And being around people who are on a similar journey to you. And that helps a lot. If you if you're if you're around friends who are partying all the time and you wanna you're in the fitness thing, then you're not gonna they're gonna drag you down. You gotta get yourself away from that. Be with similar minded people who wanna Go out and have a nice meal, go to the cinema, or go out once in a while, and you all got similar interests. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. You want to say? Yeah. 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 Thank you, Zach. Thanks, Zach. Yeah, no problem. Yeah.